Congregation of Israel, the Knesset, the KOJ. And today, what we like to do is critique another teaching that is out here and uh, is dealing with Flea Babylon. Now, the scripture tells us to try the spirits to see whether they are of the Almighty or not. And that's all we simply try to do. We're not here to pick on a personal individual. If you look at our pages, we pick teachers as we hear the doctrine. So this guy here isn't uh, someone who we feel we want to pick on personally. But there is a doctrine in which he's bringing out that we want to address and to critique. And before I get started, it tells us here in Matthew 24th chapter. If you read Matthew 24 and verse 11, it says, And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Now, whether he's a false prophet or not, will yet to be seen. But we're told to try his words to see if it is of the Creator. Now, along with many false prophets coming, we also have Timothy. Right, uh, Paul wrote to Timothy and, and addressed how to interpret or let the, or should I say, how to let the scriptures interpret the scriptures. This is very, very important. I noticed that these guys who's coming out of this New York uh, school, it seems that they interpret on the fly. As they go, they don't look at context. It is just whatever pops in their mind that they think makes sense at that moment, they will tell you this is the interpretation of a scripture. But that's not how you do it. And there is a way that the scriptures need to be interpreted. Just as the scripture wasn't written by any private interpretation, in, uh, interpretation of men neither shall the scriptures be interpreted by a private interpretation now when you read the scriptures in 2nd Timothy 2 and 15 it reads study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth now Rightly dividing the word of truth is the Greek, rightly is the Greek word uh, orthos, and it means correctly. Correct, correctly. So that means you can interpret the scriptures incorrectly. Now, we are to try this to see who is interpreting the scriptures correctly so we will know the truth of the scripture. Now here's a guy here, and the name of the, the organization or the class is um, the GOCC. Uh, the guy, if, you, if you're looking at the camera, the guy to your right is a teacher whom they call Rakar or Richard. Uh, I, I've heard him, I've heard him be addressed by these names, and here he's going to explain about Babylon and he have in parentheses here America now I want you to pay close attention to this because you know we may have people talking about you know why you know uh, why we uh, people fight and argue with one another listen listen don't even leave no comments 
about that. I mean, if you haven't, if you have a comment about the wars that is going on uh, in a house between truth and error. If you don't, if you're not familiar with that, then you really need to go sit down and read the Bible some more before you leave a comment. Uh, the Christ or the Mashiach and the Immerser, just to name a couple, Yeshua and Yohanan or Jesus and John, they had confrontation among the Israelites often. And uh, it wasn't once where John or Jesus or Yohanan or Yeshua addressed the Israelite scribes and Israelite Pharisees and teachers of the law as snakes, vipers, hypocrites, you name it. They went to bash up and destroy the false teachings. That was their mission. In so much that some of the onlookers considered uh, the Immerser and the Mashiach to actually have devils. But anyhow, when he made the bullwhip enter into the temple, he wasn't playing games because the people were being deceived and they were being robbed. So the war goes on. All right. And it will go on until lies is flushed out of this earth, period. So if that's your uh, problem with this video, then, you know, just move on. For people who's looking for truth, we encourage you to critique this video with us and also critique what we're saying all right so now this Babylon thing what we would like to address we're going to hear him give his introduction flee Babylon bless you brothers and sisters uh, we are the brothers from the gathering of Christ Church I would like to thank you for your uh, positive responses your love and uh, in the most time Christ bless you all we are, we're here today, or tonight rather, on the Sabbath, to bring some, some understanding on the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua, whom you call Jesus Christ. Some call him Yahweh Shai. Um, we hear some people are teaching that the destruction of America and the second coming of Christ is the same exact event. Is that true? We'll see once this teaching is over. We received a lot of responses based on our teachings that according to the Bible, what we've been bringing out of the scriptures, the Lord want his people to leave America, which is Babylon, before the war is hit. Now, this is one example which I'm speaking of. Now, one thing that I've noticed uh, with false teachers is they try to establish their point first to get the people minds prepared for the doctrine in which they want to bring up. For example, one thing he said without any scriptural reference at all, just pure conjecture. And this is the strength, this is part of the strength of his argument that no one really examines fully is that America alone is Babylon. See, this is the strength of his argument. And notice what he's saying. He's going to make emphasis on that to sort of set the platform for the next scriptures he want to present. Notice this. Bible, what we've been bringing out of the scriptures, the Lord wants his people to leave America, which is Babylon. He said the Lord want his people to leave America, which is Babylon. Now, what scriptural authority do we have first to say that America alone is Babylon? The reason why I'm using that statement is because in the, uh, 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 in the book of Revelation, if you take into consideration and context of the whole book, you will find within the pages of John's writing two women. Okay? You have one woman who is clothed with righteousness and stars upon her head. And in fact, the scriptures go to continue to bear out that this woman is the mother of the, uh, of, of, of the saints 
or as Paul put it, chaste virgins in Christ. So the scriptures build the case that the woman with the 12 stars or the saints or Israel's what she represent. She is technically the mother of virgins because that is what the redeemed Israelites are and that's whom this woman represent. Now did you catch this? This first woman with the clothed in righteousness with the stars on her head the 12 stars, a crown of 12 stars she doesn't represent at all a geographical place or a land mass period. Most people can identify this woman as representing a people who follow in a certain order of things. And this people make up the saints who follow in the order of the Mashiach. Now, this is the same writer now, John, who's describing this woman. Now, she is also in comparison with another woman who isn't the mother of virgins or what is this other woman she is the mother of harlots okay now this is very important to understand the book of revelation and its symbolism and its allegory one woman don't represent land at all she represents a certain people and now we have this other woman whom he's going to address which we're going to look at further but he's trying to set the platform already to tell you that this is America which is Babylon and when you're talking Babylon he's making reference to the woman in Revelation chapter 17 Babylon mystery uh, uh, the, the mother of harlots okay but I'm gonna let you hear this again look at this off the back he's going to say America which is Babylon setting the people up for his interpretation of these scriptures. Based on our teachings that according to the Bible, what we've been bringing out of the scriptures, the Lord wanted his people to leave America, which is Babylon, before the war is hit. Before the, uh, first of all, before the government itself start rounding up his own. So what we have Brothers and sisters, what we have is first proof, and anyone who believes this doctrine show where America, America alone, is Babylon. And why am I making this statement? Because if America alone is Babylon, then what of the founders of America? So if you can establish that America alone is in Babylon, then where are you to free, flee from? if America isn't just Babylon by itself. And there is no text to show you that America is Babylon by itself. In fact, we're going to show you that Babylon is older than America. This woman whom John seen is much older than America. But we only can do that by rightly dividing the scriptures. So now he's going to give his exhortation about uh, the government rounding up his people, getting fear excited within the people. And there's a reason to be concerned in all of the evils that's going through the lands. But we, wanna, we, we, we don't want people to run around like a chicken with their head cut off. First, let's see what the book is saying. All right. So bear with us for a minute as we're going to go through some more of this teaching to see what he's teaching. Now, notice his next uh, explanation people he's going to inform us that people have been asking him where should they go which as you examine his studies he really don't have a place but he will tell the people that they are to go to Zion all right this is where he's saying that they should go this is the this is before they left anywhere his first mission was to go to Zion but no, we're receiving a lot of responses, a lot of letters. Uh huh. Uh, letters like, where will we go? Where will we How go? How can we leave? Uh, now that's a legitimate question. Where, where are we going to go and how, how can we leave? And what about, you know, like he's going to say, finances? That's a legitimate question because you got to realize that we're talking about an 